to me, our text today is such a perfect example that we'll hear it most often during the wedding, but the next day it's gone. The next day we forget about it, and that's one of those things. I was married six months, and I just wanted to know exactly how to keep my marriage going, how to keep it going, and, and what to do, and I always was so inspired by my grandparents. Because when we got married, they had just celebrated their 50th anniversary. And to me, seeing someone who's married for 50 years, they must have figured it out, right? So we were married like six months, and we decided to go to Florida to see them. And, you know, I'm, we're talking, and we enjoyed our time with them. We said, let's go to the beach. So we go to the beach, and we're walking the beach. And, of course, my wife and I take off and leave them in our dust, and we're looking for seashells. But what was most important is what I saw when we came back. As we're walking back towards them, we saw my grandparents, married 50 plus years, holding hands walking the beach. To me, it was very inspiring. Very inspiring to see an older couple, because of course I'm we're we're married 18 years and we don't hold hands like this. They were holding hands. It, to me, it was so inspiring. But at that point, I was really married. I wanted to know why. So I finally got my grandfather aside and I asked him. I asked him, how have you done it this long? How have you made this work? What has worked in your relationship? Because I want it mine. And he just sat me down and looked me in the eye and said, Tony, I want to tell you, it's not about the measurement. It's not about who's in power. It's not about who's in control or who makes the rules. It's about being unified. Your grandmother and I are unified. We're united in everything we do. We may have disagreements, but we're united in all things. And that's why I love it. And that's why we've grown in our love, and that's what it's all about. And at this moment, when I was young, I didn't even understand. Didn't comprehend it. Now I'm starting to figure it out. Figure out what it's about, and figure out why Paul put this in our text. You see, we want to take this for our marriage. We want to take this whenever we hear this in a wedding and say, this is what our marriage wants to be built on, and this is what Paul is saying the church needs to be built on. The church needs to be built on in unity and love. You see, too often we like to think of unity only being in marriage, but unity is right here in this church because it goes back to one of the greatest, what is the greatest commandment? In the book of Matthew, the Pharisees wanted to know. They wanted to know what is the greatest commandment, and Jesus gave them two. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is, love your neighbor as yourself. All the laws, the prophets hang on these two commandments. See, this text isn't just about marriage. It's about everything. It's about what we are right here as a church body. We're supposed to be united as one. United serving each other, even if we disagree with each other. United serving together one by one, hand in hand, side by side, together as one body. You know, we had this snowstorm. Did anybody notice? Did anybody notice the parking lot this morning? You see, I got up and I had to shovel my driveway because my wife would like to get out too, to go shopping or something. But I went out and shoveled the driveway with the determination I was going to come to church. Determination I was going to come up here and see what I could do to clear off the snow. And you know what I found? It was already done. See, to me, that's what love is. You may not understand it, but I hope you do today. Love is about serving without being asked. Love is about caring for one another. Your neighbors, the person that you sit next to, the person who sits on the other side of the room that you may not be too fond of, love is about caring for them and going out of your way to serve them. Anybody here can love someone who's nice to them. We need to work on loving those that we're not too fond of. And that is what our text is about because that love is important. That love is something because Paul is writing to people in Corinth. And many of us have no clue how important Corinth was, but how insignificant it was. Because Corinth is Cape Girardeau. Corinth is Hanover. See, Corinth, are you ready kids? Pay attention. 
Corinth was on an isthmus. You know what that is? Probably didn't learn this in high school yet. An isthmus is two large bodies of land connected by this small little strip of land. That's Corinth. It's geographically limited in size because you can only go to the water so far. Okay, so it's a very insignificant sized city connecting two large bodies of land. And you know what? Paul went to that church for a reason. Went to that church specifically because that little strip of land connected everybody. The two large bodies of land were connected. People thought it was such a small distance, they would drive their boats in and drive them across the land to go out the other side. It would save them three days of travel in the Mediterranean. See, Corinth was so important, everybody went through it. Just like Cape Girardeau. And if you don't believe me, tell me, why are there 150 restaurants at one intersection? You don't have that many people here. It is that important. We are Corinth. Hanover is Corinth. And this message is for us, just as it was for the people in Corinth. What are the two land masses? Think of Memphis. Think of St. Louis. I'll guarantee every person here connects with someone in St. Louis or Memphis. Everybody here connects with one person in one of those cities. And that's what's so important about Hanover. That's what's so important about us understanding the message Paul's giving in Corinth about how we're supposed to be treating each other. Because you know why? It affects how we treat those. Be my God. 